Well, hello, everybody. This is Marilyn Wilson here today, uh, president of RE Technology and managing partner of Wave Group, here with our coffee chat. And I, I want to tell all of our regulars today, this is going to be our, our final for a while. Um, it, I think it's time for all of us to get back to work. <laughs> so we're going to take a little break during the summer for coffee chats, and we'll, we'll see where we go from here. Um, but <clears throat> I wanted to um, just kind of We've seen so many cool things over the last several months. Um, <clears throat> so I thought today would be a good day to just sort of wrap it up in a bow and tell you all the things that I've seen um, that I think are really good. I wanted to say hello to Mary and um, and Philip says, oh, I, can I read Can I read it, Philip? What he just what you just said? He said, I made the big move. Retirement's only 197 days away. Then you young folks can have it. My new song is, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that part. Take this job and hmm, it, you know what I mean. <laughs> So anyway, I also wanted to say thank or um, hello to a bunch of our other regulars. Robert's here, Chavon's here, Tim, um, Dennis, Bruno, Bill, a bunch of guys that are here and women that are here all the time. So thanks so much for being here today. Um, so I, like I said, I'm going to try to just, we, we've just ingested so much stuff over the last few months and it kind of feels like a fire hose. Um, but we will... Um, we're, we're going to try to boil it all down, and this this isn't the end. I got to tell you that, especially for you guys that have come in all the time, I'm kind of sad because I really have gotten attached to you. <laughs> I don't know if you have to me, but I certainly have to you. It looks like Chevron feels that way. Um, anyway, let's just jump in. So I want to talk talk more about it. So if you haven't been here before, or if you kind of forget, go to the question box and put in the oops. Um, go to the the gray triangle and open it up, and then. Um, let us let us know um you know if there's questions that you have because i really want to help you and since it's just me today really feel free to ask even more questions because it's just it's just us so we don't have to worry about anybody else today we can just jump in um so <clears throat> I, many of you i think by now who know who i am but i really have never explained i don't think my full history um you know i am president of re technology which we started back in 2010 but i'm also managing partner of wave group which is a consulting firm that works with agents and brokers and technology companies and MLSs to do all kinds of things to, you know, to help learn how to use technology. We do recruiting, we, not, not like agent recruiting, but like executive level recruiting. We do market research, we do strategic planning, we do technology selections, which is where a lot of my experience comes from. It's not necessarily just from, you know, the short term, it's from just working with, uh, with folks like you for so long. Um, it's given me some good expertise. So um, I, I do want to offer my services and we'll talk more about that later because I really want to help you guys continue to be successful because it's like, like I say, I feel attached to you now, which is awesome. So, you know, what's the first thing that I learned through all of what we've done? And, and I shouldn't say I learned it. I would say I relearned it. Um, and that, it, oh, my, my camera's not on. I just noticed that. Sorry, guys. There we go. <laughs> That's better. Um, the first thing that I learned, again, or relearned, is that realtors are caring, resilient, respectful, and are enterprising. Bottom line, you guys are awesome. <laughs> it's a really good group of people that you know care about their community, care about their clients, care about their families, um, and it's just it's a it's an honor and a pleasure to work with you guys because I see I have seen yet just another round of all of the amazing things that you guys do in your community and how much you really really care about you know making your community successful and healthy and safe and all the things that you've been focused on so good kudos to all of you I, I think there's a certain kind of personality that gets attracted to wanting to help clients all day long and and you guys are a consummate examples of that so here's the other thing that i think is really cool and i i will be the first one to say it um you know before covid you would have seen me always in that business suit just like the guy on the left right i would have been that one with perfect hair and perfect makeup and st john suits and i was looking really buttoned up um not so much in my office but you know when i was out in public you're not you don't see that anymore you guys see me every day i don't do that anymore um and you know i don't think that i think sometimes we had these facades that didn't necessarily represent who we truly are so becoming our more authentic selves and, and, you know, I think consumers are really responding to it. Um, seems like you guys are, at least for me. And I think that's true for um, for so many other people that it's, um, you know, you guys are just, 
you're, you're very real and you're very connected to your communities and people really appreciate that. So that's probably something you guys always knew, but something that I certainly learned is that, you know, the guy in the, in the blue shirt is just as powerful as the guy in the, in the suit. It doesn't really matter. It's all about your heart and what you're willing to give. So it's really cool. Um, here's one that, you know, now, now we're kind of getting into, you know, words of advice or just kind of words of counsel I'd love to share with you guys. And this is an important one. Now, Philip, I guess not so much for you because you're on their way out. <laughs> Lucky you, I guess. Um, but this is a really important, I think, thing for us to, you know, kind of take a step back for a minute and say, why do we do what we do, right? If you love what you do, if you love helping people, if you love being, you know, connected and expert and diligent and detail oriented and all of the things that you guys are so good at as realtors, but at the end of the day, you just love helping people. No, that sounds kind of cliche, but it, that's really the truth. If, if you really don't, I, I have a friend who was a realtor, not a very successful one, who really didn't like people. I'm like, why are you a realtor? That is not going to work, right? You've got to love what you do. Um, and if you don't, then it's okay. It's just maybe this isn't the, the world for you. But if it is, then it's time to really go deep. And there's a, there's a video I'm going to put in the recording for you guys. Um, about the about being a servant uh, there's an uh, it actually makes me cry every time i watch it it's about um a special needs child who works in a grocery store and he, he teaches us great life lessons about what it means to be a customer servant it's awesome so i'll send that to you all and you can share it i would show it here but uh, you know the video internet you never know so i, I didn't want to mess it up because it's beautiful so i will send that to you it's a really good place to go with that and i also have with that if anybody's interested, you throw your name into the box here. I have a great, um, I guess I'd call it a questionnaire or a worksheet. It's kind of a self-examination tool where you look and say, you know, if, if let's just assume you want to be a servant. I, I got to believe everyone on this call does or they wouldn't be here today. Um, but what, you know, what does it mean and where are, where am I strong at doing that and where can I improve, right? And this is just for, it's a tool for yourself. It doesn't have to be shared with anybody. Just kind of a check-in, right? Like, what am I really good at and where can I get better? Um, and I think one thing that I've learned over, well, I've learned it for a long time, but particularly over the last couple of months with Coffee Chats is there are so many ways to offload ideas and offload portions of the real estate transaction. Maybe the pieces that you don't feel like you're as good at or that you don't enjoy as much. Um, but at the end of the day, if you have the heart of a servant, um, you're going to do great in all of what happens. Um, and Dennis has a question. What did he say? Oh, <laughs> he just said he got his first haircut after 14 weeks. I'm with you on that, and Dennis. I just had mine recently. Um, and Mary is saying, thank you, Marilyn, for taking your time to have these coffee chats. It's been a pleasure to tune in every morning. Oh, we feel like you are family. I feel like that too, Mary. That's what I'm saying. I'm having a really hard time letting go of this. Okay. Whoops. All right, so this was one of the lessons that I personally really took to heart, and I think Verl, Verl Workman really brought it home for me, if those of you that watched him a couple of weeks ago. And, and other people have said it too, but he was just, he just really crystallized when he said it. You know, it focus your time on the things that you do best and that you like most, right? And I do think that, and I've, I suffer from this too, I think sometimes as a salesperson, you think you need to be that lead person, that main contact, that main doer for every single part of the process, right? And the truth is a lot of the pieces don't necessarily need to be done by you. And we found a lot of technology companies that could you could offload some of the things, like if you remember Transactly, for example, where uh, they talked about where you could basically buy time to, to be like, like your own virtual transaction coordinator, as an example. Um, but there may be other things too. And I, I think a lot of us think, our business is small. I can't really afford additional staff because we kind of think of it as I have to hire someone full time. Instead of thinking about all of the different ways of things, tasks that we might be able to offload to other people or other projects or other software companies, right? Because at the end of the day, what we forget is if we said, well, this cost me, I don't know, I'm making up a number, $1,000 a year, right? Well, I don't have that $1,000. But the truth is, if you took the time away that whatever that piece of software you're buying does and think about if you took that 12 14 25 hours or 50 hours of time and poured it back into lead gen lead cultivation securing listing presentations 
talking to past clients, asking for referrals, the things that really generate business, that $1,000 may look very inexpensive. So it's kind of rejiggering the way you think about where you spend money <clears throat> relative to where you spend time. If we value our time, like think about, and <clears throat> somebody mentioned this too, I think it might have been Transactly actually. Um, you know, if you said, I want to make, pick a number, $100 an hour, $200 an hour, $500 an hour, it doesn't matter, right? And do the math on what, how much business you need to do to be able to get to that number. And then think about all the things you do that aren't directly getting you to that number. There may be things that you'd say, I'm going to back up on that, right? And some of it's a little bit, you got to maybe invest a little time and a little energy, right? It might, might not, the return might not happen in minutes. But it's the, it's the thought process of, and again, Viral said it so well, like don't think you have to do every single part of the process because some parts of the process aren't worth that $200 an hour, yet they're super important. So I thought that was a really important thing to think about. Even when you're just an individual agent, um, and I don't say just an individual, I'm, a, I'm an individual person too, right? But um, you know, you don't have a team of 50 around you, you can still think about being the most efficient you can be and offloading whatever you can that isn't truly a value add. So I thought that was a really good lesson for all of us to think about in our businesses. Um, this one also, this was, a, you guys saw this one, we had a um, some branding experts on the other day. And this is another thing, how many of you, when you look at your website, and I'm gonna be the first to raise my hand on this, go, oh, really? I don't like it. Do you feel like absolutely completely proud that that is putting your best foot forward? Is it as up to date? Is the content great? Is the imagery great? Does it really reflect what you love to do the best? Does it tell your own personal story the best? It, most of us, when you answer that question, will say, no, it doesn't. Like, I, let, just throw it in here. How many of you agree with me that you wish your website and your own personal branding was stronger? Um, I, I know I personally do, and I bet some, bet some of you guys do too. So this is one of those things that we all say, oh yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, and we just never seem to get to it. So it's time to get to it, right? If you're going to position yourself, because this COVID thing, if didn't you think it'd be over by now? <laughs> I thought it'd be over months ago. It just keeps going on and on and on. And as soon as we we open the doors a little bit, then people are like, oh, it's a newer resurgence, and everybody gets nervous again. So we're, I think we're in this for quite a while. So this is a good time to spend that time to do the things, you know, to kind of rebuild your foundation on the things you know you need to do, but none of us feel good about. And even if your website doesn't get a ton of traffic, because frankly, most don't, unless you're Zillow or Realtor.com, right? But the truth is it's kind of like a personal branding statement. Like think of it more as that, right? So if I walk into here, do I think this, you know, Tracy right here, do I think she's super powerful? Do I think she's very successful? Do I, do I understand who she specializes in? You know, it, her, it's, it tells us a lot, even if it's only after you've made a connection with someone, it's almost like, like they're checking in with you to see, well, who are they really? Right. It's kind of like your own branding, your own little postcard to talk about what it is that makes you, um, makes you who you are. Dennis says, yeah, your website's always a work in progress. I agree. You never are never completely satisfied. But let's be honest, some of us, and this was true of us until about 18 months ago, not with RE Technology, but Wave Group, um, we hadn't touched it in years. You know, it was the cobbler's kids have no shoes, right? I was out helping everybody else's brand get stronger, and I wasn't focused on my own. And I think we're all kind of guilty of that. So that's, the, you know, just take the time. And if you remember from this presentation, um, and again, I'll send links to all the ones that we did that are relevant to this. It wasn't super expensive. I think they said it was maybe a thousand dollars to build a site. Now I know that's still a lot of money, but it wasn't. You know, like looking at some of these, you might think they cost a hundred thousand dollars. You know, it, they really weren't that expensive. And and this wasn't the only company. There's lots of great web developers out there. My only advice to you though about web development is do not go to a local who doesn't understand IDX data. So you might find a local web developer that does beautiful websites of all sorts. I would highly recommend stay away from them because they don't understand what they don't understand about how MLS specific data websites work and it's a whole art and a science that you need to understand. So if you find someone you like, great, but make sure they understand how to use that how to work with the data because if not 
you can cost yourself a ton of money and a ton of energy and it's really sad okay now here's something else this is an exercise that i've done many times and again um we'll be sharing this with you guys and i'm happy if anybody wants me to get on the phone with them and work through this with them i'd be happy to do this but if you remember when we did that, for any of those that you were on it, that when we talked about branding, they, one of the most important things you need to think about is what makes you unique and what are you passionate about, right? If at the end of the day, forgetting about where the business, you know, comes from, where would you want the business to come from, right? Is, it, is there a particular market? Is there a particular group of people? Like, are you, you know, is your child real involved with soccer and you want to be the soccer mom? Realtor, you know, there's a, a million different ways to look at it, but um, trying to figure out who is truly your target audience and saying it's all, it's everyone is probably going to get you in trouble because you can't be amazing at every single part of real estate, right? You can be great at a lot of them, but if you truly want to say, I'm going to become a unique, differentiated expert in something, you probably have to sort of pick the poison, so to speak, right? And you also need to think about who are you competing against. So are you competing against just other realtors in the market? Or are there other types of people that are become, you know, truly lifelong counselors for families? And could you position yourself in even a more important role? And then at the end of the day, what is it that you bring them? And that's the hardest question to answer, right? Every realtor does sort of the same thing, right? You're all about creating transaction success. But think about it at the end of the day, what is it that I am really, really, really good at? All of you have something. You wouldn't be still in the business if you're not, right? But how do you tap into that? And then what are the, what's the evidence that you have been good at those things? Is there um, you know, certain transactions you've done? Is it that you've been amazing at serving a particular part of the community? Is it your, you know, the charity that you've started? There's always, is it a particular passion that you have, you know, you love gardening, who, who knows, it could be a million different things, but think about what those are. And again, if somebody, anybody wants, I'll give you my contact information at the end. I've gone through lots of exercises like this and it looks so simple and it's not at all simple. <laughs> that one sentence can take three, four hours to work through, but it can be a very, very helpful exercise to figure out it is, who is it that I really want to be in real estate? Okay, this one is important. Um, we, we had a forewarn on yesterday, if anybody was with us. We've had trust funds on, and trust funds talked about how to protect, you know, or earnest money online. There's companies like Real Safe Agent. There's a lot of different ways to do this. The first, I think, is just to be aware, and you all know what I mean by that, you know, just being aware of your surroundings, um, asking the right questions, but forewarned specifically, as they told us yesterday, I think it's about $200 a year. If you don't get it through your association, many associations and MLSs are offering it now, but it basically gives you an instant background check, excuse me, instant background check on um, the customer that you might be talking to or that you might be working with. It not only can give you the scary things like any criminal history, and it literally details out each of the criminal acts that they've done, it can also tell you their financial history. So if someone's gone bankrupt three times in the last five years, they're probably not going to be your best clients. But on the other hand, it can also show you, you know, that they've bought 10 or 15 houses in the last 20 years, or it can show you that they bought many houses in the same market and basically demonstrate to you they're an investor. So for it's, it literally takes you about 30 seconds. It's on your phone. You just type in their name and it pops it up. So more than anything for you guys, I want you to be safe. I don't want ever, ever, I would be heartbroken if I ever heard any one of you guys got hurt, was, you know, assaulted in any way, violated in any way. So please, please, please take this seriously. I, I know, especially at a time like this where your market, you know, your business may have been down for the last few months, desperation can set in and I totally relate to that. And, you know, you might say, oh, I, yeah, it's not feeling right, but I'm going to go do it anyway. Just give yourself that 30 seconds and test it out. Even, even if you have to purchase it yourself, your life is worth a heck of a lot more than $200. So definitely take advantage of that. And again, I'll put the link to, to that coffee chat in here in case anybody wants to look at it again. Or again, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to give me a call and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. Um, now this is a big one. This is one all of us know that we need to do. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, there are certain days when you're in sales that you're like, oh, just don't feel like doing it, right? 
or hey, I'll just focus on this part of the sales process today. You know, I've got a couple of appointments and so I feel like I'm doing something and I'm all good. The truth is if we don't treat ourselves like athletes and we don't think about training every day, and you guys are obviously, that's why you're here. Um, but if we don't think about kind of get our, getting ourselves in a routine, um, we're gonna get in trouble. The, you know, if you, if you have the right sales discipline in any business, in any sales job, you will be successful. It's that simple. And if you say, oh, I'm going to sleep in today, or oh, I think I'll go to lunch, or oh, whatever, all the things that we all do when we don't feel like working, um, we're going to start to slip. You know, we've, we've talked to a lot of top producing agents in these last several weeks. And to a person, they have two things going for them. One, amazing, success-driven attitude. They didn't let COVID slow them down at all. And two, they kept doing, if anything, they dialed up the things they, they knew that worked for them during this time. And some of them have had better business than they've ever had in their entire life, right? So it works. But you kind of have to think of yourself like an athlete, like I need training. And coaching is part of that too, right? If you don't have a coach um, or even if you, you know, anybody in your business or even your friends or your family that don't hold you accountable, um, you know, you're not going to be as successful. So there's amazing coaches out there. If anybody has needs any suggestions on that, happy to send you some. Earl Workman was one that came on. I thought he did a great job. Um, so anyway, we'll go from there. All right. So what do I mean by that? So here's one of the most important things that any salesperson needs to understand is you got to work the entire sales funnel of success every single day, right? So you've got to be generating leads. We saw tons of different ways to do that. We saw that great program the other day from HomeSnap, that pro, pro concierge product they had. That one is awesome. We saw Boomtown. Um, geez, we saw a, a bunch of different ways to generate leads. Um, we also talked about, we'll, we'll get into this in a minute, your MLS and your brokerage are two of the greatest ways to generate leads, right? But then finding ways for every step in the process to make sure that you've got a way that you feel good about and that you've proven can work for you to keep people from getting from a cold lead to getting them to get to know you, to getting them engaged in some level, whether that's to get a listing presentation with them or to get a buyer's agreement in place with them, or even just to start talking to them regularly. It could be rentals. We talked a lot about rentals on this last few weeks too. Um, you know, rentals can be a great way to kind of get upstream into the market of, those folks in many cases are going to buy eventually. If you become good friends with them at that point, once it's time and you stay in touch with them, once it's time for them to buy, you're going to have a much, a whole new funnel, a whole new opportunity of leads that might come your way. And then of course, providing amazing service during the transaction. And there's a lot of tools we've seen to do that as well. A lot of that's attitude as well. And then making sure you're asking referrals, making sure you're staying in touch with them. We saw products like Home Actions that helps you stay in touch over time and lots of other things. Um, there's products like eProperty Watch, which many of you get through your MLS that can help you do that. So, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to think about the beginning of the process and the end of the process. The truth is the gold's in the middle, right? Getting, just getting leads, and th this is a, 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 an image I like to use all the time. If you get a bunch of leads from wherever you get them from, and you just let them leak out, and you don't follow up with them, and you don't call them, and you don't do the things you're supposed to do, you're just letting commissions just flow out of that leaky, leaky bucket, right? Why would we do that? That makes no sense. But the truth is, we all do it. Um, we, it, just, it. We just all do it. We forget sometimes. Someone calls, and we're like, oh, yeah, I'll call them back, and then you forget about it, or... So again, in that thinking of yourself as an athlete, athletes never miss an opportunity to get that one little advantage on their, um, on, their, on, their, on their competition, right? They're always doing the right thing. And most importantly, they're going back to being a servant. So think about that. Are, are there times when I've let things slip through my fingers that could have turned into commission? And frankly, it's a lot easier to close somebody that you've already got in the funnel than someone you got to try to bring in, right? It's a lot easier. And obviously to retain someone and keep them with you for a long, long time, that can be really important too. So, you know, the, none of this is anything you don't know. It's just kind of like, I looked at all the things that we talked about and I kind of wanted to summarize because some of you have said to me, I feel like I'm drinking from, through a fire hose for so many different ideas. I don't know where to start. So kind of wanted to go back to the basics. Like, what is it that we need to think about? Now here's another one, um, the early bird gets the worm, right? So if you're of the mindset that, oh, I, you know, a lead comes in from wherever it comes in, I'll get to it at the end of the day, you're not gonna win, right? Consumers expect instant response. 
instant real-time information. And as we've seen, there's lots of tools that can make it look like you're answering right in real time that aren't, that aren't really you. Um, some of them are chat boxes. Some of them are just auto emails that ask them for more information. And, but the truth is, if you can call them and you can connect with them live, I know a lot of times you guys tell me they won't pick up the phone, which I get. But if they do, even if you try and you try instantly, even that is a major thing. So again, I'm sure this is nothing new. You guys know this, but it's just reminding ourselves like this is the stuff that makes the difference. The one thing that I don't want you to take away from chat, from copy chats is that technology is the answer to every life's problems. It's not. It's, I, I heard a great expression one day from a, uh, I was doing a focus group in Arizona and this woman said, I feel like technology for agents is like a beautiful purse as an accessory to an amazing suit. Without the amazing suit, the purse is pretty, but it's not a great, but you can't just have great technology. You've got to have the right attitude with the right skills and the right focus married with technology. And then it all starts to come together. Now, if we heard this word once in the last two months, we've heard it um, seven million times, right? <laughs> virtual, 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 virtual. Um, I think the good news that we've heard about all this is that there's a few real benefits that we're all learning kind of by, not, not by choice, by absolute you know, happenstance, that number one, in this time, we, you know, we, I think we all want COVID to be over, but the truth is every time a market opens up, we see a spike. And so it's really not over yet, right? So virtual can help you keep you safe, but also if we really embrace it, and again, we saw tons of different ways to do this from virtual open houses at, um, on the MLS to realtor.com to uh, Matterport, lots of different ways to do it it really can make you more efficient and more profitable. So if you can train your, your customers to say, all right, let's go look at 20 virtual open houses, right? Sitting in your desk, not driving them around town. They look at 20 and they say, oh, you know what? I only like these two houses. Wow, you just saved your, yourself 18 houses of drive around time, right? How much is that worth? And frankly, it's just, it's gonna make the time in the houses they are interested in much more valuable. You can really make sure you understand those houses intimately so you can really be the person to convince them if they, of course, if they like it, that that's the right place to go. So, you know, again, I think some of us have gone here kicking and screaming, but the truth is if we think of it as a sales tool and not as a, you know, a, something that was forced on us because of COVID, um, I think it's going to be really good. And one of the things I think we're going to see emerging is people training you guys on how to do live virtual open houses because you weren't all built, you know, built to be video stars. And there's a few that have, right? But most of us didn't think of ourselves that way. So, you know, how, to, how can you train yourself on that? Again, if any of you need help on where to go on that, um, let me know. I'll be happy to help you because I, I don't think it's going anywhere. If anything, it's going to get more important. Um, now, Philip, I know that you've heard me say these things because you like, showed me you actually dreamt about this, which is funny. But I can't emphasize enough that, you know, we sometimes overlook our own brokerages. I can tell you that we've actually worked with a bunch of the brands on this page, <laughs> worked with EXP and Gardner and Ladder and Bloom and Compass and Douglas Elliman and Ebby and KW and Century 21. We've worked with almost all of these guys at some point. Every single one of them takes their job of finding you tools to be successful very seriously, right? And, but we forget sometimes that you know, that they, they have all this stuff. And, you know, sometimes I hear from an agent, well, I don't want to use the broker tools because everyone else in my office is using them. So I'm not differentiating myself. And here's my counter to that. Guess what? The truth is it's not about having a technology. It's about using it, right? Like we heard that the other day, what's the best CRM? The one you use. It's the same thing, right? So these guys have spent time and energy that if this is part of what you're you know, the reason you signed up with these brands and that you're loyal to these brands, they, they really, really, really want you to be successful. And they, they found what they believe are the best tools for you. So really take time with them, learn this stuff. Even if you just do one a month, right? Just once every two months, just try something that they're offering you and take the training and, you know, really, Take it seriously, ask the questions. And by the way, there are no dumb questions. I know, I feel like that sometimes, oh, I can't ask that question because you know everybody should know that. The truth is none of us know everything there is to know about technology. Just taking the time is gonna make a big difference. And yes, Philip, you know this one. 
Your MLS absolutely is one of another, one of those great partners that we sometimes forget about. Like this is Miami. They're probably the poster child for what I'm talking about. This is a picture of their home screen, their dashboard. And when you log in and my gosh, look at how many tools are in there. And we've looked at a lot of these tools on Coffee Chats. Remember we looked at Cloud CMA and that new live uh, interactive CMA product that they're just launching. That's an awesome one. We've looked at HomeSnap, that's amazing. Uh, Remind has some really neat things. Uh, CRS Data has some stuff. RPR is awesome, you can customize that. You know, I'm just looking at what they've got here. Um, Teradatum, our, our um, listing book is great for, that's a whole other way to, to generate business. Uh, every one of these at some level on this list, RE Technology, don't forget us, um, has all kinds of ways to help you be successful. So don't forget about them. Again, even if you just click on one of those a month and just learn a little bit more about it every single month, I guarantee you that you're gonna feel like your money being spent for MLS is a lot more valuable than you've ever thought it was before. But, but more importantly, you're gonna see how the MLS actually can help you be successful. So broker number one, MLS number two, and frankly, associations are good too. Associations are a lot of the ones that are offering things like Forewarn and some of them offer other tools that um, they offer forms products and transaction management. So, you know, don't forget about any of them. They're all really good. Let's see if we have any questions coming in. Um, okay, let's see. Whoops. All right, so this is another one, social media. It's, this is another one of these topics that all of us are like, oh, you know, you never feel like you're good at this. I don't care if you've got 7 million followers, which none of us do. Um, we do know people that do, however, my daughter knows a bunch of kids that do, it's scary. Uh, but you, you've got to figure this out. This is a tool that's not going away. And it doesn't mean you have to do it yourself. Again, we've looked at lots of tools from lots of people like Back At You Media and AdWorks and a whole bunch of different people um, that can help you with this, but you can't ignore it anymore. If you, And I don't believe any of you guys have, but it's like one of those things, like if someone said to you, what are you doing for social media? Every single person should have an answer, right? And there's lots of people that can help you with it. You don't have to do it yourself, but you do need to think about it. Okay, let's see what else we've got. And I guess feel free to jump in on these if you have any questions. Um, happy, to help, happy to help. And again, I'll be happy to refer you to some people that can help you. Um, now, this is another one too that and I know that all of you guys are already trusted advisors. You wouldn't be in the business as long as you have been and it wouldn't be as successful. But you know, thinking about taking on this role in an even more proactive way. So if I you know, just put our, ourselves in the, well, we, we are all consumers, so it doesn't take much to imagine, right? But let's say someone just purchased a home a year ago, or let's say that they've been thinking about selling their home, or they're renting and they're thinking about whether or not you know, I should be able to buy or not. Well, if you stand up and educate them about the facts, about what's going on in the market right now, whether that be from using market statistics, um, articles that you've, you know, you've gathered from national sources, studies that you've read, you know, basically position yourself as that expert and help them feel comfortable that it is, really is time to buy or sell, and you're really best suited to tell them about why you're re you're ready to. That it's time to to buy or sell. Don't forget about those low mortgage rates that are crazy. I mean, it's the the interesting juxtaposition we're in right now, where we have very little inventory and yet we have a very strong incentive to buy, is creating all kinds of great dynamics in many many markets, right? But consumers don't know that. They think that real estate's like in trouble. It's really not in trouble. And we've seen chart after chart after chart on these coffee chats that shows how the market's back up. And if anything, it's higher right now than it was at this time last year because of all that pent up demand in April and May. So, um, you know, just take that job seriously. And it doesn't take much. You know, the way someone explained this to me when I first started blogging, and I don't, you don't need to blog, but it's just a good mindset is if you read something interesting, or if you see something interesting that you think is valuable enough to share it with one of your friends, it's probably blog post or it's probably social media post worthy, right? Or it's probably email newsletter worthy. So think about what are those stories that you think are interesting, that you think are valuable. And by the way, the more you share your insights and your perspective on the world, the more likely you're going to attract people that are like you, right? And I don't mean demographically like you, I mean like that 
that share your opinion about like where real estate is going and things like that. Um, so it, it's something really important to think about. And again, we saw home actions that can help you with this. We've seen ad works that can help you with this. Um, of course, you can do your own, you're gathering your own data for this. But again, there's people out there to help you. I think that's another thing I want you to take away is don't ever think if you have a challenge that there isn't either a person, a, a firm, a coach or technology in some way that can help you solve that problem. It's just finding it. And remember, and a little shameless plug for our technology, the reason why we have over 150 categories of products on our technology is to help you with those kinds of topics, right? So you can type in just about any kind of technology you can possibly think of, and you're gonna find some examples of it on RE technology. Now, again, if you find one you're questioning, and you, you guys want me to give you my opinion on it or to share in another you know, group or just connect you, because I know a lot of the owners of these companies, I'm happy to do that. Um, I want you guys to be successful, and I want you to take advantage of all this great stuff that people are building for you. Okay. So that's kind of my summary for you today. There's so many things that, I mean, when I started to think about what is it that I want to share with you, I could go on for hours and hours because <laughs> I really feel attached to you guys now. So I guess what I really what I want to leave you with today is, um, you know, how can I help you? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the summer off and I think we all need to because we got to go do business now, right? We've been learning and learning and learning and that's awesome, but it's time to go get back out there and it's time to enjoy the summer. Hopefully you can at whatever level that you can. Um, but I really, really honestly want to help you guys in whatever way that I can. So as I mentioned, you know, I've done strategic planning and market research and technology evaluations and helping people find the right, you know, defining what it is that they want with the technology and then finding the right solution. There's a million things that I can help you with. Um, and I'm happy to just point you in the right direction, you know, help you in a more fundamental way if you need it. Whatever it is that you guys think can help you take your business to the next level, I'm on deck. I want to help you. I want to keep helping you because um, it, it's just, you know, I kind of, like I said, I feel connected to you guys now. I really want to see you be successful. Um, and so just a couple of, of other things, you know, we've talked about uh, you guys signing up for the coffee chats. We still do webinars all the time on RE technology. And those are usually a little bit longer than coffee chats, but they're more in depth too, so you really learn a lot. Um, so if any of you want us to sign you up automatically for all of the kinds of webinars and things that we do, put your name in the questions below, or um, you know, add add it to me. You just email me at Marilyn at RE Technology. Um, you know, I'm happy to help you. Um, Okay, so I've got a few questions here I want to talk about. So Philip says, now that the rules are opening more and more, agents are not using virtual. Retirement is around the block. All I'm doing is taking on one national investor and writing my book. Oh, well, we'll get, when you write your book, Philip, let me know. We'll put you on the show. <laughs> um, and thanks to Coffee Chat, it made me think and act on what I was supposed to do to, you know, to by all of our presenters. So, um, so thank you for that. Yeah, I, hopefully they were helpful. Um, and Bruno says, I'm grateful for your support. At 72, I learned technology for my journey back to 2046. If in the next years you decide to visit Barcelona, oh, I will definitely take you up on that, Bruno. Thank you so much. Um, and again, we are going to still have, you know, the RE technology uh, channel is out there. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because we put new kind of content on that all the time. And again, it can continue to help you to learn. You don't have to do it live. You can do it you know, at any one time. If you haven't yet signed up for RE Technology, again, please feel free to. If you're having any trouble finding it on your on your uh, MLS channel, just let me know. Just again, send it to Marilyn at RE Technology and we'll get you signed up, okay? So with that, I just wanna say to all of you, um, oh, I, can't, you know, I can't even work. This is really what I want. I want you to guys have a great summer, a great fall, a, a great life. <laughs> um, and if there's any anything I can do, honestly, Marilyn at wavegroup.com, I really, really want to help you guys, okay? So, um, and if there's other topics, someone just mentioned, hey, we didn't talk about SEO, that's a good point. If there's other topics you'd like us to cover when we kind of come back out, this, out the summer on this stuff, let us know and um, we'll get back into it. So I wish you well, everybody. I love you guys and have a great day. Bye.